This is a part of a series of short lessons around implementing screen-based rules. In these lessons, we're looking at the definition of business rules within screens using JavaScript. Let's start by looking at the client-side API. In previous lessons, we've looked at the role of create scripts. Let's remind ourselves about these. Now, we learned that as a screen is requested from the browser, the field definitions for that screen are pulled from metadata. This pulling from metadata triggers each of the fields to fire their create scripts, and the create scripts are executed on the web server within the Sage CRM application layer. We saw how the create scripts can then change the properties of the, of the fields, and, if, um, and you may have seen a previous lesson that, in which we created a new panel in the top of the top content screen of the company screen, and we also added an image field into a person summary screen. So there's actually a, a lot we can do with changing the properties of fields with a create script. Now we're interested in this lesson about changing what goes on within the browser. So this could be when the screen is changed into edit mode. This means that the, the, the screen has been delivered in to the browser, all the HTML has arrived in the browser, and there are on-change scripts associated with these fields. Now these on-change scripts fire when they detect the value in a field has been altered. Now, we'll also see that they can do much more within the browser as well. But at some point, uh, the data that we may have edited will need to be saved, and then that would be submitted as a form request as another HTTP request. So we submit that again back to the server. It's at that commit time when each field within the screen can have a validate rule check the quality of the data to make sure that the data does not break any of the business rules, and validate rules uh, are the ones that block the insertion into the database. And this takes place within the server itself. The client-side code that we're going to be looking at in this sequence of lessons is only part of the bigger picture of script and workflow interactions. But for now, let's focus just on what's taking place within the browser. Here you can see I'm looking at a Sage CRM screen, and I happen to be looking at the address for a company. So this is an HTML page, and if I right mouse click, I can look at the page source, and we can see here that the page includes some JavaScript functions that are defined locally, but you can also see that in the uh, default system, extensive use is made of external script file references. The local script in each page within Sage CRM would be the definition of objects like the current user object, and you can see that uh, taking place actually in the top third of the screen. And the local script, uh, so that's the local script, and an example of a script library would be the loading of things like the jQuery library that Sage CRM uses. And if you look towards the bottom half of the screen, uh, you can see references there to tags that look like script type text slash JavaScript source equals and then CRM slash JS slash library slash and then the name of the field, the name of the file that's being pulled in. In this case, all our client-side JavaScript has been separated into script libraries. Um, we'll find that within this context, the client-side API is also a file that can be loaded into the screen. And, and this is true. What we can find amongst the densely packed HTML is a reference to the client-side API. And you can see I've highlighted that and Actually, it's grey lighted uh, with inside uh, the, the screen grab that I've got there. The client side API is a library of JavaScript functions that we can call to make our life easier when interacting with the Sage CRM user interface. And we're going to see that as we go along, as we look through the next sequence of lessons. We can mix the code 
that uh, is enabled through the use of the client-side API with plain old JavaScript, sometimes written as POJ. Um, we can also use the usage of the API along with uh, jQuery. Um, and we'll actually find that there's a relationship between the client-side API and jQuery. And we can also extend the API with our own functions and our own script libraries. Now, looking at this screen, you can see that there are a number of different ways in which we can address one of the most fundamental elements within the user interface, and that's a field. The API makes working with Sageshyam very, very easy because it simplifies the way in which key visual elements can be identified, referenced as an addressable object, and then controlled. So we can select and work with fields, we can uh, select and work with buttons, we can select and work with tabs. And displayed here are just some of the techniques for selecting fields. Keep these in mind when we're looking a little bit later on within some of the examples. To give you an example of how we do this, I, let's consider how we might work with a field like address postcode. And I'm going to demonstrate using JavaScript uh, within the console of the browser. If I hit, and I'm using Chrome here, if I hit F12 on my keyboard to enter the console, the console allows me to enter JavaScript and directly interact with the page using any of the objects in the page. Now this is all temporary. Uh, and it's live and direct. It's not making a permanent change to anything, but it does mean that I can test out and use this as a sort of uh, sandbox. So I can use the client-side API. It's a very good way of experimenting. I'm not making any permanent change to the screens. I've just dropped in here some code that I had in memory. So var my field equals crm.fields in brackets uh, as a string address postcode. Now this is referencing the field called address postcode and it's going to create a field object that I can then use. So I've returned, it creates the object, and I can start to type the object. And as soon as I start typing my field dot, I will see a list of different objects that are, or methods that I can use within this object. So I know that this is a declared object of a particular type defined by the the H uh, by the API. So I now have easy access to methods like highlight. And if I just put the end brackets on and return, you can see the effect is immediate. With something like a field, it's not just a simple thing like um, highlight. There are lots of different methods that allow us to control the look the behavior of any field. And if we do this for uh, elements that are like field, we've got equivalent methods that allow us to control other structures within inside the user interface. One of the traditional challenges of working with different browsers, for example, has been to ensure that the code works in each version. The API simplifies our life by taking this um, really to a very simple way. Um, I, here I've got an example uh, using code which is attempting to hide a button on the lead summary where the current user is not the assigned user for the lead. So it's actually quite a complex amount of code that I have to do. I have to count for which browser I'm entering this for and then write the appropriate code. This is all written in plain old JavaScript. But the client-side API takes care of worrying about which browser that we're using. And you can see there that um, I've not done any um, consideration of which browser, but actually this is because uh, we're built on, the API is built on jQuery, and jQuery itself takes care of the browser independence of code. This means our, sh our rule, anything that we write essentially, starts off being very short and easy to read, and especially because we're making use of the client-side objects to allow us to address the fields displayed within the screen. So we have 
as well access to familiar objects like the current user object and the API knows about CRM buttons so that means we can look and reference the value on the screen we can access contextual information like the current user object and then we can control the button we can select our button and we can hide it everything becomes much simpler using the client-side API